You guys, I finished the best book and we need to talk about it. So it's called Personal Effects and it's by Robert A. Jensen. And I just um, started it last night and finished it this morning in my PJs because it was so good. Sorry, there's a weird shadow. Anyway, um, this book is basically written by the CEO of this company that handles all of, well, a lot of the world's major disasters. He's like the world leading disaster company or something like that. Um, and basically if there's a huge event like a bombing or a plane goes down or 9-11 or whatever, like there is a company <laughs> whose job it is to deal with that because it is just so much of a task for like one police department or whatever to handle. And not only that, but like there's so many legal aspects of it. Like, um, if it, is it in a federal, federal land or is it owned by a state or a city or whatever, whatever, whatever. And it's so complicated with who actually is the one that is going to actually deal with this. So that is his job is to deal with it. And I'll just read really quickly, um, from the first part of this book, but I will say that um, okay, anyway, let me just read this first. The aftershocks of tragedy reverberate for decades. Grief, trauma, mental illness, lawsuits, bad press, lost revenue. Most of my life has been spent responding to those events. As the head of the world's leading disaster management company, on retainer with many of the world's airlines, national governments, maritime rail companies, and others, I handle the dead, often literally. Um, and so one of the things that is always an interest of mine is just this idea that there is so much I'm interested in, which is why I love reading nonfiction. And there are so many careers that I would love to learn about or possibly do, or maybe just job shadow. Um, and I can't because I'm one person and I have one life. Anyway, we won't get into that. Um, but basically... In this life, I'm mostly a teacher dabbling in other things. And so I love learning about the careers of others and kind of getting a behind the scenes look. And that's basically exactly what this book is. Um, he talks about how like when there's a car accident or something, um, there's this like fascination of people like watching, but then like some people are like watching like that, like they don't want to see what they do want to see. Um, and it, he just says, um, the fascination never goes away. It's a rare glimpse beyond the headlines, behind the yellow tape and barricades set up to isolate and protect the scene. In some ways, those barricades are meant to protect the living because when people see what is behind them, their world changes forever. But what goes on behind those barricades when done right can be a masterpiece of coordination, exhaustive work, and finding a path through the worst that the world can throw at us. Um, and I will say this book is pretty graphic um, as far as stuff that he has found. Um, but while he has gone through all this and has so much to say, I think that the main, like, there's not really th themes in nonfiction apparently. I learned that in my sixth grade class the other day. But the kind of the main idea of this is that yes, disasters happen. They are horrible. And basically for most of us, our lives will only be touched directly by like maybe one in our whole life. Like that's why we need a disaster company like this because they deal with these all the time. That's their full-time job. And so um, they have more expertise than we can like whatever in a given situation. But the whole point is that we have stuff that is outside of our control you are not in control of if you're on a plane and it crashes or um, what happens to your loved ones or if there is a shooter in a um, movie theater or whatever. There's so many things that happen to people that are horrible that we are absolutely not in control of. And we tend to like perseverate on those things and worry about them. But what he's saying in this book is there are tons we can control and that's what we have to really focus our time um, doing. So I'm going to go over to my notes, um, just to talk about some of the things he mentioned that we can control, like things that he's learned doing this work. Um, 
so he says like on an airplane you should always sit by the emergency exit like obviously you're gonna help people but you're also the first one out you know so that is super important um one of the things i found the most interesting and inspiring and something that i might figure out if i'm going to implement or not um is basically he talked about mormons and i don't really know that much to know if this is like a fact a perception a generalization whatever but um it is apparently according to this like part of their beliefs that they need to take care of themselves and kind of like buffer themselves against emergencies because stuff does happen so they tend to stockpile food and water so that if anything happens they're prepared and then they also tend to stockpile money as well so they have like a big safety net and um he said like it's not like a problem for them because like their food isn't just going bad waiting for an emergency like they use it but they just have more on hand um than what they need and the other thing he said that was really important in emergencies is basically to have patience and confidence and just keep going um there were a lot of times in the book where he talked about people respond too quickly without thinking and it actually hurts them rather than helps them so just trying to have patience and think about things and um yeah just make logical choices and don't just like throw up your hands in the air which is obviously really hard um there is a lot of just kind of random interesting facts that i thought not to be morbid um but i just found them interesting so one of the things is he was talking about like when buildings blow up that the concrete is just like everywhere and that dries people out it like sucks all the fluids out of them so they actually are mummified which i didn't realize um he also goes into the various ways that a bomb could harm someone so um <clears throat> and i just i guess i never really thought about it um basically the rapidly expanding gases can like you know rip someone to shreds were his exact words i believe um, but then you also have like the blast wave beyond like the immediate little section and um, that can rupture internal organs. So someone could look fine, but on the inside their organs are ruptured. And then um, finally you could be crushed by like falling material. And he was saying from the Oklahoma City bombing that there was somebody who like basically things had crushed them. So their head was like a perfectly formed triangle. So anyway, very, very graphic, obviously, especially when you think like, this is actually real. Like these are actually real people and real stories he's talking about. Um, yeah. Um, he talked, oh, this was something else that was really interesting, I thought. So I really want to read the book. I think it's called I'll Be Gone in the Dark. It's about the Garden State Killer, and I haven't gotten to it yet. But I did not realize, I knew they found the killer after the author died and that her work kind of helped but i didn't realize that basically uh one of the killer's like cousins or some like distant relative had done like i don't know if it was ancestry dna but it was one of those dna kits the 31 and me or, or whatever you know one of those and they found that the DNA from the crime scene, one of the, I don't know, one of the crime scenes, there were a lot, matched or like they could tell that this person was a relative. And so that really helped them to get close to who the killer was. Um, and let's see. Um, oh, going back a little bit. Sorry, this is disorganized. Um, he was saying how important it also is to have a will and a disposition. I know that I should have a will. But I have no idea what a disposition is. So I'm going to talk to my attorney about that. Um, and okay, then the other thing that was really, really interesting to me um, <clears throat> is just this idea of, uh, like the book says, <laughs> personal effects. What is left behind in an emergency? What do your belongings tell about you? What sort of a story would you get about yourself if you went through your belongings? And yeah, that's kind of morbid, but like what what does what you carry with you every day have stuff to do with you? What kind of a story can it tell? And it goes through some 
again, graphic and sad stories. Like for example, they found a woman who had a high heeled shoe on and a tennis shoe on the other foot. They were like, why does she have <clears throat> two different shoes? Well, it was at the World Trade Center. She was just sitting down to start her day of work and she was changing from like the shoes that she probably like used to get on the train. Like that was like a big thing in Chicago that people would wear really weird footwear because they were walking lots and lots before they got to work. And she basically was in the middle of changing her shoes when everything happened. Um, and so there's kind of that idea, but there's also like what happens with this stuff? Like literally what happens with the stuff that they find? And so they're talking a lot about like, for example, plane crashes that are in the water or whatever, like, or um, tsunamis or just like, they were mainly talking about things near water. But in any case, like there's a lot of rules um, and like government regulations about what has to be cataloged and stuff. So like, let's pretend something happened on the beach. Well, there's garbage on the beach. And that also has to be cataloged and held and all that stuff because you never want to like have something withheld that actually is part of the scene. And so even ridiculous things like empty containers of bleach or like whatever need to be included. And basically all this stuff is stored in like these giant, giant warehouses. And it talked about like the giant like lost and found buildings basically. Um that they have and then also just like the whole process of like how you go through reuniting items with a loved one like for example there was a woman who um they laid out the belongings from an incident and she knew that this one item was um her husband's watch or part of it and she had to wait a certain time period so that everyone could place a claim on the items and then they could make sure that if there were ever two claims on an item that they could figure out who the rightful owner was and deal with that. But like, you can't just take stuff because you might discover that it actually does not belong to your loved one or whatever. And they actually had that with body parts as well, that there were times when the wrong body part ended up in the wrong casket. And that's why you need disaster management companies that are gonna take their time and not rush through things. So that was that. I'm trying to see if there's any other things I want to say about this book. Um, he talks a little bit about police officers and how he feels that bad police officers are due to either bad screening, poor training, or litter, little or no oversight. And I definitely agree with that, but I still do think that there is a lot of just internal racism bias that needs to be addressed, even in good people um that could come out in their work and I don't think that that was something he really mentioned although um we did seem to agree politically which I didn't think we would the way he started out um and also I'm trying to read books that are written by authors that are unlike me and I had no idea going into this but the author is actually bi so that was really interesting to hear his story about like he's like this big like buff like disaster management guy and he was in the military and like all this stuff and so he's like in a position where that is typically something that he has to hide about himself and it just was interesting to hear that part of the story in here as well um he was married to a woman they got divorced and now he's married to a man like he's just equally attracted to both and um you know it's just i feel like that this book is really about how you can control what you can control and how you can do your best to kind of prepare for any situation but i felt like that was like an added bonus um a, a added peek into his life um and just like viewing him as a human being and then finally i guess the last thing i'll say was at the very very end he kind of talks about the elephant in the room which is the pandemic and covid and he's talking about face masks and he talks about all the reasons why people don't wear face masks and then he gets to what he feels is the root of the problem and I never thought about this but I found it really interesting so I'm just going to leave you um, by reading this. The same thing with face masks. Scientists will tell the population that some form of face covering cuts contagion dramatically and it does. 
but some people resent being told to wear them and saw it as an infringement on their personal freedom. But it isn't just that. Masks are an annoyance. They fog up your glasses, they're uncomfortable. Some people think that they make it harder to breathe, but that is also not the real reason. On a deeper level, they are also an explicit acknowledgement that things are bad, that we don't like it. Not wearing a mask reminds us of normality, of life as it was and as we want it to be again. Just like the shocked relative who won't open the door to a police officer bringing the news of the death of a loved one in a plane crash, we try to shut out death and disaster or imagine that it will happen to someone else.